When you're done eating chicken, don't throw out the bones. Instead, what you want to do is boil them in a pot. This will loosen any excess meat and soften the bones. And no, we're not making soup. After boiling, strain the bones out. Run them over cold water and the meat should just come right off. Boom, clean bones. The next thing you want to do is put them on a pan and bake them in an oven for 20 minutes at 350 degrees. That's going to sterilize the bones and get them ready for what's next. Take the bones out of the oven, add them in a blender or a grinder, and turn the bones into a fine powder. Right now what you have here is a super awesome magical golden powder packed with phosphorus and calcium. Mix one teaspoon of it with some water, and then feed your plants some bone meal. Your dogs will love it too. They sell this stuff in stores to save you money and make your own right at home. You know you can grow a lemon tree in a pot? Grab a lemon from the store and take out a few seeds. Remove the pulp, then soak them in a bowl of water for at least an hour. Then place the seeds on a wet paper towel. Fold it a few times and place it in a Ziploc bag. In about five to seven days, the seeds will root. Plant them tail down into a pot with soil. Keep the soil moist and it'll grow into a seedling. Then mist it with chamomile tea three, four times a week to encourage the growth. Then cover it with a plastic bottle or a mason jar to create humidity and protect it from bugs and insects. Provide it with nutrients, keep taking care of it, transplant it when it gets about 12 inches long, and then boom, you'll have a lemon tree in no time. Look at these cute little lemons growing already. So start growing a lemon tree. Have a rose cutting that's at least six inches long and has at least three sets of leaves then trim off the bottom sets of leaves and cut the tops off cut the stem on a 45 degree angle and a slice in the middle of it then grab some honey dip the stem in the honey and plant it in some soil it'll grow into a whole new rose bush honey acts as a natural rooting hormone so don't buy those chemical rooting powders just do this instead you won't believe what you can do with these three simple ingredients. Grab a container or a bowl, add two tablespoons of oats, one teaspoon of cinnamon, grab one black tea bag and empty out the leaves. Mix it up and what you have right now is a super powerful mixture that's gonna revive your plants. You can either add it directly on the soil of your plants or mix it with new soil when you're repotting a plant. Loosen up the soil, trim the roots a little bit, Fill the pot with new soil, add in the mixture and mix it up. Transplant your plant and cover it with soil. Oats are super rich in phosphorus and iron. Black tea rich in nitrogen. And cinnamon encourages root growth, prevents diseases and keeps bugs away. So if your plants are dying, try this mixture and get them to flourish again. Did you know if you grab a tea bag, cut it open and empty out the leaves? Add one tablespoon of oats. Boiling water? Leave it like that for at least an hour, but the longer the better. Everybody knows you need protein to grow muscle. But when it comes to plants, plants need nitrogen to grow. Nitrogen is like protein for plants. The next thing you want to do is strain the liquid out. What you have right now is a magical potion packed with nitrogen. So if you want to boost the growth of your plants, water your plants with this once every three weeks and watch the magic happen. So don't buy those chemical fertilizers. Just make your own right at home. Did you know if you grab some matches and soak it in water? What's gonna happen is the phosphorus, magnesium, and sulfate is slowly gonna get released into the water. Plants need phosphorus to develop good root systems and sulfur and magnesium for these leafy greens. Once the matches dissolve, fertilize your plants with this magic stick water. Plus, if you stick the matches into the soil like this, it'll get rid of and keep away aphids and gnats. When you're done eating a peach, don't throw out the pit. Instead, what you want to do is crack it open 
inside of it, you'll find a seed of life. Soak the seed in a bowl of water for about six hours. The next thing you want to do is fill up a small container with some moist soil. Then place the seed on top and cover with more soil. Cover it with some wrap and place it in the fridge. The reason why you need to put it in the fridge is because some seeds need to go through a cold treatment in order to sprout. That's what happens in nature. Keep checking up on it and eventually you'll see that the seed has sprouted. Boom! Then grab a pot with soil and plant your peach seed and pretty soon it'll become a seedling. When it's at least six inches long, plant it outside and grow a peach tree. Did you know if you grab an apple, slice it in half and take out one of the seeds? Wet a paper towel, put the seed on top, then sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon on it. Fold the paper towel over a few times, place it in a Ziploc bag, zip it lock, and then store it in the fridge. In nature, apple seeds go through cold temperatures. This is called stratification. That's why we put them in the fridge. Keep checking up on your apple seed and pretty soon you'll see, boom, it sprouted. The next thing you want to do is grab a pot with soil and plant the tail down. Keep it warm and moist, and before you know it, it'll grow into a seedling. And when it's at least six inches long, plant it outside and grow an apple tree. You won't believe what you can do with these two simple ingredients. In a spray bottle, add half a cup of vodka, a tiny bit of dish soap, and one cup of water. Close it, shake it up, the skin. Instead, fill up a pot with water and add in the peels. Bring it to boil and then let it simmer for about 20 minutes. Right now what's happening is vitamin C, manganese, and this powerful enzyme called bromelain is being released into the water. The next thing you want to do is strain the liquid out. This liquid gold boosts your immune system, helps with digestion, strengthens your teeth, good for the skin, increases red blood cells, and reduces inflammation. Add a little bit of honey in a cup, pour in some of the pineapple water, and drink some pineapple tea. Store it in an airtight container, Stick it in the fridge, enjoy it hot or cold, or use it in your recipes when you're cooking. And yes, your plants will love it too. When you rip off that last piece of toilet paper, you see this tube? Don't throw it out. Instead, what you want to do is cut them in half, grab some kind of tray and line them up in it, fill them up with soil, then grab some seeds. I'm going to do tomatoes. Plant the seed in each one. Water them and get the soil nice and moist. Cover the top with some plastic wrap. A few days later, after the seeds sprout and become seedlings, you can just grab each one and plant them directly in the soil in your garden or in pots. This way you don't disturb the roots of your seedlings. Plus these things are biodegradable, they just disappear over time. So save your money and don't buy those seed starting cups and trays. Just recycle and use toilet paper rolls. Did you know if you grab a cucumber and slice it in half, then scrape out the seeds into a glass of water, mix it around. If the seeds sink to the bottom, they're good seeds. Grab the good seeds and place them on a wet paper towel. Grab some cinnamon and sprinkle some on top. Cinnamon prevents mold and helps seeds sprout fast. Fold the paper towel over, put it in a Ziploc bag, zip it lock, and in just three days, check this out. Boom! Baby cucumber seedlings. Plant each one in soil and grow some cucumbers. Each seed will produce long, beautiful vines and produce 15 cucumbers. Grow them outside in your garden or inside your house. All you need is a pot and a stick. Did you know if you grab a red onion, roughly dice it up, put it in some kind of container or bowl, then grab two garlic cloves, dice them up, and add them in. Add one teaspoon of cayenne pepper, fill it up with water, and let it sit there for about 12 hours. The next thing you want to do is strain the liquid out. And then pour the mixture into a spray bottle. Close it. 
What you have right now is a homemade, all natural, non-toxic bug spray. This is gonna keep away aphids, slugs, spider mites, and other types of insects away from your plants. Spray it directly on the leaves of your plants and watch the magic happen. So don't buy those crazy expensive insecticides at the store, just make your own right at home. Did you know that I wrote another book? If you enjoyed my first book, the second one has all new plant hacks, tips, and tricks. Ten chapters, easy to follow, step-by-step -step instructions, lots of details, tons of pictures, and it even has QR codes that you can scan with your phone to watch the videos while you're reading. How to grow fruits and vegetables, plant food from scratch, repurposing, do-it-yourself projects, outdoor gardening, indoor gardening, how to keep plants alive.